What's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again. Today I want to test out RetroPie on a $2,000 PC. Now this is my main build. I use it for everything. I'm going to go over the specs real quick, but before we get started, I want to get this out of the way. This PC was not built specifically for emulation. I use this for video editing and PC gaming, but since I have it here and I have an extra SSD, I figured I'd install Linux and test out RetroPie. You do not need something this expensive and powerful for emulation. I've got tons of videos on older Dell Optiplexes and Lenovo mini PCs running these same emulators and they run pretty well on those units. Like I said, this was not built for retro gaming, but I did want to test it out. I really wanted to test Botocera on this rig, but unfortunately these RTX cards are not compatible with the Linux kernel that Botocera or Recallbox uses at this time. So I'm going to be running RetroPie inside of Linux, specifically Pop OS 18.0. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the specs. I'll also list it in the description. For the CPU, we have an i5-9600K overclocked to 5.1 GHz on all six cores. The cooler is a Corsair H115i Pro, 16GB of Vengeance DDR4 3000 MHz RAM. The motherboard is a Gigabyte Z390 Elite. For the GPU, I'm using an EVGA 2080 Ti for the Win 3, along with an EVGA 750G3 fully modular power supply. And it's all inside of a Corsair 275R case with a tempered glass side. And like I said, I'm running Pop OS 18.04, and I'm just using a small PNY 240GB SSD for that. This is my main PC, and it usually always runs Windows 10, but I just threw this little drive in here, installed Linux on it, and then installed RetroPie inside of Linux. So let's go ahead and see how this thing performs. All right, so here we are with Pop OS 18.04. On the left hand side, I have my X server running, so we can see that we have that RTX 2080 Ti. This is the EVGA for the Win 3, and I do have the overclock switch turned on. On the right hand side, I have system information up. We have that i5 9600K usually at 3.7 gigahertz, but it is overclocked on all six to 5.1. 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3000 megahertz RAM, and I do wanna upgrade this. I wanna to go to 32 with this machine, and I probably will in a few weeks. So I've already installed RetroPie x86, and if you're interested in doing this on your machine, I have several videos. I'll leave links in the description. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up from here. I've added it to my favorites. It'll bring us right into emulation station. And as you can see, I already have a bunch of systems set up. If you've ever run RetroPie on a Raspberry Pi, this is basically the same thing, but we're just running an x86. Plus, we have access to more emulators. You can access the RetroPie setup script from here, so you can install more emulators. You can go in and install more themes. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of themes that support GameCube, PS2, and some of the other emulators that are available on x86 that aren't on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to go with my favorite, Tronky Fran. The x86 version does support video snap, so we can go right in here. And I do have some videos installed for certain systems. Unfortunately, the built-in scraper for RetroPie isn't working correctly, so I wasn't able to scrape everything. But the first thing we're going to test here is the main version of Killer Instinct 2 running in LR MAME 2010. So with RetroPie x86, we don't have support for 3DS, Wii U, PS3, or even Xbox. Now, some of those games do run really well on this machine in Windows, but we do have access to a few emulators that aren't available on the Raspberry Pi running RetroPie. Now, even if they were, they wouldn't run well, but we get PS2, GameCube, and we do have access to Sega Saturn here, and it runs at full speed. So here it is, the main version of Killer Instinct 2 running an LR MAME 2010 inside of RetroArch. You could use the standalone version of MAME if you want to, but it runs really well here. So I'll just go ahead and back out of here with my hotkeys, bring us back into emulation station. And now we'll move over to GameCube emulation. I just got a few games to test here. I'm only going to do GameCube, PS2, Sega Saturn, and you just saw MAME. This thing's going to run PSP at 5x resolution. It's going to run Dreamcast fine, whether you use the Raycast core or ReDream standalone inside of Linux. And this is the Dolphin emulator running Automotalista at 1080p. I could go a bit higher, but I think it looks really good at 1080 
Next up, one of my favorite GameCube games. This is Soul Calibur 2 running upscaled at 1080p. Next up, we have some Sega Saturn emulation using the LR Beetle Core inside of RetroArch. Now this takes a beefy CPU to run, and I'm pretty sure that this thing's gonna handle it. And finally, we'll move over to some PS2 emulation. This uses PC SX2. It's actually the standalone version in the background, so you'll see it pop up here. And I'll get that little border so we can see our FPS up at the very top. First game I'm gonna test is Bloody Roar 4. And by the way, I'm using OpenGL, and this is upscaled to 1080p. And finally, Shadow of the Colossus, also OpenGL, 1080p. So really, this was just a little experiment that I wanted to do. I've been wanting to run RetroPie on a high-end machine for a long time, and I just really never got around to it. I've tested it on plenty of small mini PCs, like the old Lenovo's and the Dell Optiplexes, and even some of the B-Link PCs. But I've always wanted to see how it performed on a high-end machine, and I finally got the chance to. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this PC was not specifically built for emulation. This is my Windows 10 gaming PC slash video editing PC, so don't get the wrong idea here. You don't need this much power to run emulators like you just saw. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Definitely keep an eye on the channel because I just hit 250,000 subscribers and I got an awesome giveaway coming up. I'm going to do a PC build with a Ryzen 2700, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 2080. That's going to be going away to somebody. Plus, I got a few other things that I'm going to be throwing into the mix. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and if there's anything else you want to see running on this rig here, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.